Hello. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. And I personally appreciate that we are not started at 10 a.m. <laughs> so uh, I hope that all the other things in this conference will be even better. OK. So uh, my talk is going to be about uh, pattern libraries uh, and how to make them and how to make the process of making them. Uh, first of all, let me please uh, tell a little bit about myself. So I'm currently based in Helsinki. I work for SC5 as a software specialist. Uh, I'm mostly focused on front-end. And uh, SC5 is a consultancy company. We help other businesses to do some uh, complex stuff on, on the web. And uh, uh, some challenges are to, be, to build pattern libraries for, for the clients and to build the process for them. Uh, previously, I worked uh, in Amsterdam for TMG, and for a long time, I worked for Yandex in Russia. But uh, for the whole uh, my professional career, I was focused on the components on the web, like pattern libraries, style guides, and uh, different helping tooling for the developers. And uh, today, I'll be comparing the approaches which I used back then at Yandex and which I'm using now at SC5. And I also need to mention that I'm personally proud that I'm lazy. I think it's a good thing for a developer. I usually do not want to code. And to achieve this, I code something which would work for me. Because my dream is to press the buttons. Just do this, do this, and then some scripts would do work for me. And if speaking about uh, interfaces, I had been always wanting to have like set of blocks and then like a child to combine them together and so get a properly working interface. For a user, it would mean more stable result because less human involved and means less human mistakes. And for me as a developer, it would be a lot of code reusing and less work, which is my dream. And so building pattern libraries, I'm trying to achieve that. I started at Yandex, and I spent there quite a long time. And uh, Yandex is a Russian Google competitor. It's a giant company. Uh, it provides search engine and also uh, a lot of satellite uh, services like uh, webmail, maps, and such. And uh, it is over 200 websites and applications, and they all need to share the same brand style. Uh, and, uh, Logically, it should be some library which the developers of those 200 services link to their code and then re reuse the code of the library. And so at Yandex, uh, with a great team, we started uh, to build the components, we called them blocks. And uh, we provided uh, internal pattern library. It was called Lega. It was literally a repository uh, with uh, CSS, JavaScript, and some other needed technologies. And uh, the, uh, the websites could link it uh, and re reuse code. But one of the challenges we faced was version migration. So let's say that. Uh, library has new version, and you as a developer who uses the library need to, need to update. But it may mean that uh, you have to rename classes, or HTML can be changed. So you have to go everywhere and change everything in HTML structure. And if you wrote JavaScript, which uh, relies on this HTML structure and particular CSS classes, then you would need to fix this uh, JavaScript. And this list is actually, I googled uh, in the internet when I was uh, searching for uh, how people describe uh, migrating from one version of Twitter Bootstrap to next version of Twitter Bootstrap. So it's the natural example, because many of us are using Twitter Bootstrap, and there is uh, uh, sometimes no automated way for switching. There are some helping tools, but still you need to provide some work. And if speaking about such a library, it means that we are uh, fixing one website 
And the dependency is only the library which provides 20 basic components, and it is still pain. People postpone this task. As for Yandex case, it was to update 200 websites, preferably at once, uh, with a library which provides over 100 components, and there were also like satellite libraries based on that common one, and they probably had other components also dependent on that. Uh, it's a business, and it's brand style, and there is always do it yesterday requirement. And the main thing, these are the people who are doing this job. And when providing new version of the library, I'm as a library developer, make them to do some job. They usually do not like that. <laughs> so, uh, trying to solve this problem, back at Yandex, uh, we decided that we will not require people to use exact HTML. Uh, instead, uh, the developers were able to describe interfaces in a tree-ish way. It uh, firstly was uh, XML structure, later JSON, but the idea was that they declare what are the components and what are the components inside and data among them. It is pretty similar to what we have in React now. And uh, they were special tooling to understand how to build the page, and then uh, these tooling knew the temp templates to provide HTML, and with switching to new version, uh, the library knew itself what is, what is the HTML to produce. And so everything changed for a developer right away. Another thing to do is that uh, for this library of common components, we provided uh, a pattern library website, meaning documentation website, where all the components were presented with uh, examples of usage and some documenting text. And uh, the idea was that they would be service-specific pattern libraries, so that uh, a developer would build a pattern library on top of uh, their specific code, which is not shared across the company, but for their service only. And uh, this documentation website would be their pattern library, and it includes common components, and it includes also their specific components. And there was special tooling for that. And this should be the result. So below you can see the component rendered. It is a, a group of radio buttons. And above there is some code to, to, to use this component. And so the uh, website should be a bunch of these documented components. And actually, it looks like we provided upgrade button, which was my dream for a developer, so they just upgrade and everything works I in itself. But let's have a closer look for it. So actually, uh, to be able to use it, there were uh, requirements for developers. So they needed to follow uh, quite complex methodology strictly, uh, and uh, the file structure and technologies to use were dictated, and even building tools were di dictated. And uh, now we can see a couple of uh, libraries open sourced, uh, and uh, so we can have a look how these websites are built and how everything is working. And so, uh, in theory, we, can, uh, we should be able to repeat it, right? But I'll show you the config of one of the libraries. So this is the config you need to make and understand to be able to have it working for your service. For, and uh, I know this stuff, but for me, it still looks quite, quite complex. So I would say more complex than uh, Bootstrap. And so, uh, in fact, the result is perfect. The result is guaranteed, but literally program different. And, but I was lucky. I got a second chance in my life. When I joined SC5, I faced uh, similar challenges. Uh, also building pattern libraries for large companies, and this time for many of them. And I decided that probably I will do something different. Like in school, we go over the test, and this was wrong, this we do differently. And 
this time I decided that probably I should not be that focused on the technologies, but better on people I'm working with and people I'm working for, so the developers who are using uh, my, my code and my tooling. And one of the problems uh, people are facing is to think in modulus. It is not uh, natural for us to think in modulus. We usually consider interfaces as a bunch of pages, and there is no catalog of components in our head. And it is, it should you, you should switch your brain to appreciate interface as a bunch of components. And the uh, helping solution for that is living style guides. These are the tools which you run over the code, and they parse it, and then they provide this uh, documentation uh, website for you. Uh, preferably, it is uh, with live updates, and this way uh, a developer can use it as a development playground and develop uh, every component separately, encapsulated, isolated. And this approach is called uh, Style Guide First. And from my experience, it helps uh, very much to shift into this uh, component development. So, uh, meaning this, uh, at SC5, we developed uh, SC5 style guide uh, as a tool. It is provided the same PM package, which you can install into your project and then run over your code. It will parse the uh, CSS and uh, build the style guide for you automatically. This time, uh, it does not dictate any technology, so the structure could be what whatever. The language could be CSS, SAS, LES, whatever you want, but it just ma makes the style guide. So uh, I can show you ex an example. This is uh, its website, but I will show you also here. Uh, so this is not client website, this is uh, my personal website. I just installed the same tooling to be able to show the components. So there are a list of components here. For example, this is header block of my website. So this is articles. So th this is the rendered component you can see then below the text. So that's it. But again, what to do with version migration? Because if you, as you could see, the documentation provides HTML to use. But what would happen if we provide another HTML structure with the next version of library? And uh, this time I had a closer look on uh, what is the exact problem. And I think that now that problem is not that something is broken on the website after migrating. The problem is that something is broken and the developer doesn't know what is broken because it, it is not possible to check all the web, uh, web pages manually and all these scenarios of user interaction manually. And so uh, I think that this problem should be solved with visual regression tests when uh, robots take screenshots of your uh, particular components, pages, pieces of interface, and then they compare automatically. And uh, if there is some inconsistency, they show you the result. But usually, uh, this technology, uh, there are couple, so, um, even not couple, quite a lot of solutions for visual regression tests, but uh, they are mostly for experienced developers. And um, if someone is a junior developer, it's really rocket science for them to configure such thing. But even junior developers still have this problem of migrating from version to version, and they deserve to have a solution. And keeping that in mind, I decided uh, to provide a plugin for the, the style guide tool I, I showed you. Uh, visual tests for the components documented with AC5 style guide. And uh, as a result, a developer can run a task and then uh, see which components are okay, which are broken. The numbers are the numbers of the components in the style guide, they are all enumerated. And then if we see that, okay, this particular number is broken, we can go to the style guide, which is our development playground, and f fix it there. And of course, there is a, a human-friendly version. So here it is. So it shows like that, okay, 
in logo, uh, something is shifted one pixel. Then there is something with font, like again, maybe sizing as such. We, we, we can spot it here and then go to the style guide and debug it normally in the browser. So another thing to mention is that uh, this time uh, we started in open source. The tool was never a private repository. There is, uh, well, everyone says that open source is good, you will benefit from open source, blah, blah, blah. But I still think I have to mention that because I experienced that and I can say it is true. It is really good and uh, people do contribute, not only with bug fixes, but even with features. And uh, especially if you build uh, very good relationships with the uh, community of the users of your tool, you can get a lot of harvests from that. And I even made a special slide for them because I, <laughs> I appreciate it so much. So uh, this is the picture from Google Analytics. It calculates uh, like what are the people using the tool. And, uh, Okay, we do not cover Africa yet. It is our next challenge. But I personally appreciate that almost all over the world, people are using a tool which was uh, developed by a relatively small company and uh, supported uh, sometimes by one developer, sometimes by, by two, but never more. There was never 50 people uh, team behind, behind this tool but it's still valuable for people. They are using that. And I like that fact. And I like sometimes looking at this picture. So that's it. Uh, these are my contact details. So if you have uh, any questions, feel, feel free to contact me. And these are the slides. So go, go ahead to check them. Thank you very much.